Well, I think you'd agree with me, though, that knowledge is king. I mean, either, either side of the story, the fact comes down to if you run the business, there's knowledge that is available for you to make a decision. And those decisions make a big impact or can on what you end up taking home. I know from personal experience that having your company structured properly can be a big benefit. Oh, then there's no doubt about it, Gary. You're absolutely right. Structured properly. The key word is properly. Mm -hmm. and, and there's just no question about it. People need to get counsel. One of the biggest mistakes that, that new business owners make is not getting counsel soon enough in the process as their business is growing. You know, it's easy to start a business out of your basement or your garage. You know, you've got this hobby you've been working on for years and, and you decide, boy, should I really like to quit my day job and work on this, you know, woodworking, for example, or just whatever it may be, right? And, and people have all these ideas and God bless Americans because they just get all these wonderful ideas for things that, you know, you guys like me never think would work like this camera right here. I mean, how, anyway, the point is that, that people think of all this stuff and it's great. And it's easy to develop these things in your garage, but all of a sudden you're making some money and things are starting to cook for you a little bit. And, and people don't, they don't stop. They don't take a look at what's going on and they don't get counsel. You need to get counsel in these things. And the sooner the better as your business starts to move. That's good advice. That's for sure. Uh, as far as um, the family goes, I know that the tax brackets changed. We know that child credit doubled, I think, if I remember right. Yeah, the, the child credit doubled, but the other side of that, because a lot of this is a double-edged sword. Yeah, sure always uh, is. Child credit doubled, but they eliminated the dependent exemption. Uh, no, but the other right. side of that coin is they doubled the standard deduction. So for a married filing jointly couple, the standard deduction was about $12,400. I think it was going to be for 2018, something like that. And now it's doubled to $24,000. So, so, so right away, you've got, you got $24,000 of income that's exempt right off the bat. And then you've got a $2,000 child credit uh, per, per child, as long as they're under 17. And here's where we get into the definition of child, because it's different for all these purposes, right? Okay. And so, so, you know, we won't, we won't get into all that. We don't have six hours to go through all that. So, 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 so that comes into play. Uh, and, and now again, we got a, we got a double-edged sword here. On the one hand, they've eliminated the dependent exemption for non-child dependents. For example, if you've got your aged, aged mother-in-law living with you at home and she's got no source of income and you're taking care of a hundred percent of her support or at least more than 50 percent of her support you can claim mother-in-law as a dependent exemption well that's gone too now what they do give you is a 300 dollars credit for what they call non uh child dependent so that would be like your mother-in-law and so uh so you know there's there's some give back there okay. after all of this goes through the wash gary uh we're still looking at basically a tax cut across the board here excellent mm -hmm. excellent now here's the thing gary this tax bill is good. When we, we started the conversation talking about whether this is, is tax reform, I said it's not tax reform. Right. Here's one of the reasons why I say it's not tax reform. One of the things we've been cursed with over the last 15, 16 years is temporary tax provisions and expiring provisions. In other words, what is the law today is not going to be the law tomorrow, or it might be. We don't know. What is the law tomorrow? might not be the law the next year, but it could be. We don't know that either. Yeah. All right. So in other words, people don't have the ability to do long-term planning because the tax code is constantly in flux. And as far as I'm concerned, Gary, that's a constitutional problem. I think it's a due process problem. Mm -hmm. You've got the right to due process a law under the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution. Due process of law gives you, the, it, 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 implicit in the concept of due process, this, this is my opinion, it's just me talking now, implicit in the concept of due process is the right to know what the law requires you to do. And you should have the right to know, uh, particularly when we're talking about tax laws that carry affirmative duties with them. All right. It's not like robbing a grocery store where all you got to know about robbing a grocery store is don't do it. Right. It's all you need to know. <laughs> right. When it comes to the tax law, you've got all of these affirmative responsibilities to file this and account for that and pay for this and these affirmative things that you have to do. And in that kind of a situation, you have a right to a stable law that's consistent from year to year so you can plan and understand what your responsibilities are. So the fundamental failure of this tax law, this new tax law, and frankly, what we've been dealing with for 20 years is the fact of these expiring provisions. In this tax change that we're seeing here now, 
None of this stuff is permanent, Gary. Every single one of these things expires after 2025. So what, what is the point of all of this wrangling in Congress and all this time and energy and debate and fighting that's gone on over the last two years, year and a half anyway, over this tax bill, when none of it is going to stick anyway? It's, to me, that's really maddening. OK, let me ask you a question about that. When it expires and Congress cannot come to a decision, does it stay as it is now or revert back to what it was? Reverts back to what it was before this change was in place. Uh, that's not good. That's, that's what it does. Yep. That's not good. Well, Dan, we're going to have to break here. But listen, it's been great having you today. And of course, our partners love you. They uh, see you here at the Provision Conference. And you've, your books, of course, are well known. And uh, you know, we always enjoy talking to you about taxes, but we, we appreciate yes, that yeah. someone out there like yourself can talk to us and give us the lowdown on what we need to think. And as Christians, you know, this money belongs in the kingdom of God. And that's we need exactly to take right. it serious. We need, that, that, we need that, to claim that, those deductions. That, that's exactly right. Listen, uh, Christians, Christians over and over and over again, uh, uh, you know, resort to Romans 13, render to Caesar. You know, you got to pay your taxes, render to Caesar, right? You render to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. That's right. But, but you don't give to Caesar what belongs to God. That's right. That's right. Right? That's and that's what we're doing too often. That's right. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what's happening. Uh, so I would say also fear is a big aspect. People don't want to dive in there because, oh, yeah, no doubt. you know, fear, fear hits them. But, you know, you have to be able to confront it and you have to be able to understand, at least have someone guide you. But you're going to be ultimately responsible because the IRS is going to say, you signed the return, right. you're that's responsible. Exactly right. yep, so you need exactly to take that right. into consideration. But Dan, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, we love you and appreciate you and your family and your wife and all of you that are doing great work for our, many of our clients, uh, many of our partners, excuse me, uh, our clients, you've helped them and we thank yep, you for that. Right. And yep. we're on a crusade and hopefully someday we'll get the true reform that we're looking for. But for right now, we'll take the... We'll take what we have we'll as an opportunity. Take what we get. It's a tax cut and it's a good thing. We'll so do let's it. not lose sight of that. So thank you so much. All we'll right, talk thank to you, Gary. God time. bless you. I appreciate you having me. Give my love to Trenda, please. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.